One more time. Ready to go. Ready with the GoPro. Hey everybody, we are on the road once again. This time we are driving up to Orlando through US 27, Okeechobee Road in these parts, as we exit Miami through the city of Hialeah. Most people will take the Florida Turnpike going north, but if you've seen my previous videos you know I absolutely loathe that road, and we are not in a hurry so let's take this a somewhat more scenic route. Check out the street vendor, an iconic staple in this uh, mainly Cuban-American enclave. We are going to take a detour right here uh, before South Bay towards Bell Glade. The plan is to go around Lake Okeechobee on the eastern side and maybe we'll get a chance to see the lake. There's not a whole lot to see here in Belglade, actually. We continue towards Pahokee, which is a little further north along this vast agricultural area. Most of it is sugarcane, I believe. Pahokee is not so bad, actually. It's actually quite a bit picturesque. Here we find uh, this gas station where I can fit uh, the trailer, kind of. Uh, don't mind my driving, okay? We top off the tank. We continue going around the lake. Uh, but there's this tall levee to our left, uh, so you can't really see anything. The nearest place to see the lake and access the scenic trail that goes around it is at the Port uh, Mayaka Locks, and I think this is it. There's uh, an old Class A here blocking the way, but uh, we hesitate for a moment and uh, we go around it. I think we've made a wrong turn. This uh, seems to be a construction site. Uh, there is a no trespassing sign, so... Maybe we should turn around. It feels like such a nice place for a picnic though. Maybe the entrance is on the other side. Let's go across the bridge. Here we are, let's uh, walk up to the Lake Okeechobee Scenic Trail. The lake is so vast that you can't even see the other side. And way in the distance. Yes, after 26 years in my Florida, I finally get to see Lake Okeechobee. It's like an ocean. All right, let's check all this out from the air.
We continue driving along the lake's perimeter, uh, which is, uh, to be honest, not all that interesting since there's that levee I was talking about obstructing the view of the lake. The scenic trail which goes on the top of the levee would have been a more interesting walk because you can't drive on it, uh, so we should do that some other time. There's a multitude of RV parks in this area and some private residences too, but so many RV parks. So many RVs and we're filming this in early April, so we are near the end of the high season. Eventually, we arrive at the town of Okeechobee. They have some artillery weapons and helicopter and a tank on display right here at Flagler Park. We start heading west, or northwest rather, along this very rural area, as we want to eventually merge back into US 27. It is actually very pretty countryside for Florida. Lots of cattle. We cross the Kissimmee River, and eventually, well, we make a quick detour here to visit the Hen Scratch Farms winery, which was recommended by someone, but <laughs> to be honest, I don't remember who. Parking, as you can see, is a little too tight for the RV, but let's see what we can do. I think I can make a U-turn here, kind of. And there you go, success! They have a bunch of local products and souvenirs and the Florida Muscadine wine. Yeah, we got uh, one red, one white, the sunrise and the sunset. And some garlic infused uh, grape seed, the grapeseed oil and uh, the raw honey. We continue on our way to Orlando. <laughs> there are also all these chickens and hens and a rooster roaming around. I think these two want to get into the RV. They are very friendly. Actually, I've been told that if you bring Cheerios, you are allowed to feed the chickens. So I think they were probably hoping to be fed. <laughs> they are not shy, that's for sure. Okay, we continue towards Orlando. We reach the intersection with US 27 and we are going to refuel one more time. Uh, this gas station with, by the way, has become one of our favorites along US 27. They have excellent dark roast coffee. You can tell we've been driving around this area for too long when we already have a favorite gas station. But we live in South Florida. We only take out the RV for a few days at a time and this state is a long peninsula. So we don't get to travel too far north. Uh, not yet, anyways. We continue passing by Sebring, Avon Park, Lake Wells. We are going to stop here on the way back to see one of Florida's most overlooked places, the Buck Tower Gardens, which are situated at one of the tallest hills in the whole state. I have to take a detour a little further north uh, due to heavy traffic and I'm actually glad I had to take this detour. Take a look at all these citrus groves. This is actually really picturesque. A very pretty countryside. After a while we get back on US 27. And eventually, we make it to our campground, the Orlando Thousand Trails. In some of my previous videos, I mentioned that we got a free membership to Thousand Trails with the purchase of Minitini, so it is convenient. Our stay is pretty much free. Yeah, we made it. Thousand Trails, Orlando. Yes. Once again, we've got full hookups. We always uh, like to walk around uh, the campground and check out all the other rigs. It's a huge campground. A 
We're trying to find our site somewhere nearby. If you see a really tiny trailer, let me know. Yeah, we're there. I found it. Look at it. Okay, that's different. All right, let's cook dinner. Hey, we're cooking with Blue Apron. <laughs> We recently subscribed uh, to this thing called Blue Apron, uh, which is a weekly subscription and they ship you recipes and all the necessary ingredients uh, to make uh, three meals a week uh, and no, they are not a sponsor. Not yet, anyways. Dinner is served, blackened cod, uh, quite appropriate since we're filming this on Good Friday. We call it a night early since tomorrow we are going to Epcot and that's going to be a busy day. Good morning from the Orlando Thousand Trails. We walk up to the lake to experience this beautiful sunrise. It is truly magical. And when we think it couldn't get any better, hot air balloons start rising in the morning light. Some toast and coffee. Toast and coffee. We're leaving. We're going to Epcot. They call it the happiest place on earth, Disney World. Today we are going to one of the main theme parks, Epcot Center. Actually, I believe they dropped the center from the name many years ago, but... Anyway, this weekend they are celebrating the Flower and Garden Festival. Hence all these uh, topiary gardens depicting Disney characters. Let's check out uh, Mission Space, one of the main attractions and one of my favorite ones actually. Let me explain here uh, while we wait in line. They are going to put us into a simulator in which they send us on a mission to Mars. Even though the 12-year-old graphics probably look a little dated by today's standards, it is still a lot of fun, especially with the simulated G-forces. It is a contraption similar to the Gravitron, but very cleverly implemented to simulate the high G-forces of the space flight. It's felt that way one time or another. Even the heroes who went to the moon. But Sorry that I didn't take any video on the actual ride. It was too dark and I was afraid to drop the camera or with all the movement and the g-forces i did send myself a couple of video postcards they really ought to update these booths the video quality looks ancient outside and they have these guys playing these makeshift drums I don't know if this is part of the Flower and Garden Festival or a regular show, but it's pretty cool. They're very talented drummers.
let's check out the Nemo ride. The line is not very long, fortunately. The beginning of the ride is not all that great. It kind of simulates being underwater with lighting and these video projection screens showing some animated characters from the movie. Towards the end though, the 3D effect of the characters projected over a real aquarium it really works quite nicely. It is almost credible. They should do that throughout the ride. The highlight of the ride, at least uh, for me, is the actual aquarium that you walk into at the end. I particularly like the dolphins uh, swimming around. Also, the tropical fish are really cool. The very same species we uh, saw in the animated movie. I found Nemo. They also have manatees on display. Yep, eat your lettuce. Very nice. It's, it kind of reminds me of the Monterey Bay Aquarium with all these giant fish tanks. We continue walking around uh, the theme park, uh, which is starting to get more crowded by the minute. There are all these uh, topiary displays and flowers everywhere uh, because of the Flower and Garden Festival. This is my favorite Disney park, perhaps because it is the more educational one. I particularly like to walk around the lake along the pavilions of all the different countries, which is actually what we're going to do next. It is almost like a quick trip around the world. There's the iconic Spaceship Earth structure and the also iconic monorail. Okay, let's do it. Let's take a walk around all these different countries. The first one is Mexico, represented by an ancient Mesoamerican pyramid. As part of the festival, they have all these outdoor kitchens selling small portions of regional food. Here in Mexico, it is naturally tacos al pastor, quesadillas, and tequila-infused beer. Hmm, very good. The replica of the Aztec calendar welcomes us as we enter the pavilion. Plaza de los Amigos, which is designed like a small Mexican town's central plaza and market. We take the Grand Fiesta Tour, which is a boat ride. To the right, we see the San Angel restaurant, very fancy. To the left, there's another pyramid. And there's also a volcano. The graphics have obviously been redone since the last time we were here, about 10 years ago. And in classic Disney fashion, they have animatronics. Yep, this is much better. The last time we were here, they were still looping film projections. This is pristine digital HD. We continue. The next country is Norway. Yeah. 
The pavilion is designed as a Norwegian village with architecture from some of the different regions in Norway. They have an exhibit indoors as well. We eat a pear and almond dessert, which is delicious. In Germany, Italy, USA, then it's Morocco, France. Moving along, coming up next, China. They have this beautiful garden with a duck pond. There is this 360 degree movie that looks like it hasn't been updated since the 1990s. It is still film, bad film at that jittery and soft focused actually the movie only dates back to 2003 but come on china you can do better shanghai and hong kong don't even look like that anymore they also have this whole room displaying the terracotta warriors and how they were discovered and such there is also this exquisitely detailed replica of the terracotta warriors very cool. <laughs> Our treat for this country, spring rolls and plum wine. Goodbye, China. The next area is the outpost, originally designed to be an African pavilion that never materialized. Here they have the Florida Fresh. It is the state's representation at the Flower and Garden Festival with local produce and seafood. We opt for the shrimp and stone ground grits and anduilla sausage, uh, sweet corn, tomatoes and cilantro. It is very tasty. When in Germany? Yes, when in Germany, well... We'll drink some beer, why not? They have one of these clocks with animated figures at this typical German square. Oh, benvenuti all'Italia! Our treat here is a fiori di latte, prosciutto, pane di la cazza, which is a pinwheel of mozzarella, prosciutto and ciabatta bread. And it goes without saying, some prosecco. The collection of buildings here is evocative of the Venetian, Florentine and Roman architectures. Let's drop a coin at Neptune's Fountain, which is kind of reminiscent of the Fontana di Trevi in Rome. Maybe by doing this we'll get to visit the real thing soon. Keep your fingers crossed. It is all very agreeable, if it only wasn't so hot. Come in the winter, folks, if you can. You won't regret it. Here we get to see one of the many acts uh, that they have throughout the day. Let's watch. Buonasera. 
Buonasera, buonasera a tutti e benvenuti in Italia. Noi siamo gli sbagliatori di San Sepolcro, veniamo dalla Toscana, dal centro dell'Italia e oggi faremo uno spettacolo rinascimentale del gioco della bandiera. We are the sbagliatori of San Sepolcro. San Sepolcro is in Toscana, in this part of Italy. And today we perform for you a typical traditional show of flag waving. It's a renaissance performance. The show is very entertaining, but we are going to continue. Saying goodbye or arrivederci to Italia and saying hello to the USA. They have the American Adventure, which if I recall correctly is an animatronic history show that at least the last time I was here wasn't exactly enthralling. So instead, we are hitting the barbecue pit they have fired up for the Flower and Garden Festival. The pulled pork sandwich does not disappoint, nor does the flight of beer. <laughs> we continue towards Japan. A pagoda welcomes us to the pavilion. <laughs> the courtyard area is filled with Japanese pools and gardens. Look how pretty this pool with the bonsai tree in the middle. Welcome to Matsuriza! It looks like they are going to have a drumming show in front of the pagoda, so let's listen. Meanwhile, they are positioning the globe for tonight's fireworks, which is called the Illuminations, Reflections of Earth. Teriyaki curry is something. It is a teriyaki curry bun filled with chicken and vegetables. And they keep on drumming away. Okay, enough drumming. With that, we say sayonara to Japan and marhaba to Morocco.
Here we have some harissa chicken kebab and falafel pocket with cucumber, tomato salad and tahini sauce. And they have this band playing folkloric music. And everybody seems to be having such a great time. <laughs> The Moroccan pavilion is the only one in Epcot in which the country's government helped with the design, hence it's a more authentic look. Even the mosaics were made by Moroccan artisans. We see a camel with a red hat. Maybe we should get a red hat. And I see a Mexican hat too. This is interesting. Oriental rug. First doors. And we make it to the back. This right here is a replica of the ancient Old Nigerian fountain located in Fez. Exquisite craftsmanship, all this intricate stonework. It's a bazaar. We exit through the bazaar, naturally. And actually, there's a quite a nice bar. And we arrive in France. Vive la France. We are approaching. There's this area with all the artisans, like in the Place du Tertre in Montmartre, and we'll have our treat right here at the Fleur de Lis. Confit de Gounard. It's a duck confit. Are we on the banks of the Seine River? These boxes are imitating the ones used by the bouquinists. They used uh, booksellers that are an iconic staple on the banks of the Seine River in Paris. They have topiaries of beauty and the beast. Inside the pavilion, they have a panoramic movie similar to the one we saw in China, called Impressions of Friends, but this one has been playing here since 1982. So, if the Chinese one hasn't aged gracefully, I can only imagine how this one looks. Actually, we don't feel like going inside. Comment below if you have seen it and if you liked it. La Petite Rue, which is uh, another French cliché. Here we also drink some Calvados, which is a spirit similar to a cognac, but made with apples. The whole pavilion has a nice ambience to it. It is France, after all. We also encounter this old camera, around what looks like one of the banks of the Seine. We even get to look through it. In the banks of the Seine River. Let's continue towards England. Imagine they built a bridge instead of a tunnel. Actually, rather than England, I should say the United Kingdom, which is the proper name of the pavilion. It is designed to look like a stereotypical British village. I hear music in the distance. They have a pub with fish and chips and all that. And the iconic red telephone booths. Any Doctor Who fans out there? Actually, ironically, the Eiffel Tower looks better from here. Let's follow the music, shall we? In the back, they have this excellent band playing covers of some of the greatest British rock classics. Here we catch them playing some Pink Floyd. I would like to show you a whole portion of the concert, it was very nice, uh, but you know how music publishers are about copyright and I don't want to infringe on anyone's claim, believe me. Suffice to say that the band was really good. The audio booth is cleverly tucked away, I think, 
behind this open window. Of course, they finish, and quite appropriately, with a tune by the Beatles. I am really going to get in trouble with the copyright police now. British Revolution is the name of the band. What a great way to end. We are exhausted. We have been here for over eight hours now, eating and drinking our way around the world. We have one more country though, our great neighbor to the north, the great land of Canada. The pavilion is designed to remind you of the great outdoors, so we begin with this stereotypical lumberjack show. They also have one of these uh, circle vision cinemas, and this building kind of reminiscent of the Chateau Laurier in Ottawa, which is Canada's capital. A waterfall to continue with the outdoorsy theme, and once again, the Chateau Laurier look-alike. You know what? We're really tired. We are going to have one last healthy snack right here at the urban farm. We are going with the quinoa dish, which is quite delicious and healthy. Apparently they grow their own stuff. Well, we certainly had a great time. I haven't always been a fan of Disney theme parks. It is, after all, a fabricated experience, but I'll admit it, this was a great experience. Maybe we'll return for the Food and Wine Festival. It is such a well-run operation. It is one of those places where everything is perfect, from the audio levels and the quality of the music, to the way they handle traffic, to the chirpy attitude of the employees. My one complaint is that some of the presentations look kind of dated, but nowadays with technology changing so fast it is almost impossible to stay up to date. I'm just saying, for the amount of money they charge, they should be able to update the exhibits a little more often, especially those involving film projection. I really had forgotten how bad film looks. You know what? I think we are going to skip the fireworks this time. We are really exhausted. Okay, let's see what it is. We return to our campground, the Thousand Trails.
Good morning, coming to you from Lake Hancock near Orlando, Florida. Time to go as we say goodbye to the Thousand Trails Campground. They have a mini RV show here by the entrance and hey, look at that! It is Mini Tini's twin! We take US 27 South, but after an hour or so on the road, we make a quick detour to visit the Buck Tower Gardens. It is an idyllic garden and a tower with a carillon envisioned by Dutch immigrant Edward W. Buck. Fortunately, they have a section of the parking lot for oversized vehicles and RVs, like us. Buck Tower Gardens. Let's check out the visitor's center first. They have this uh, museum section with the recreation of box desk, a model of the tower which houses one of the largest archives of Carillon music in the world, and pictures of the construction. And the original Carillon keyboard, which is kind of like an organ keyboard, but designed to be played with your closed fists. Very cool. Let's go check out the gardens. When Bach arrived here in 1921, this was nothing but an arid sand hill. So he hired landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted to turn it, and I quote, into a spot of beauty second to none in the country. The tower was built at the highest elevation here and it is called the Singing Tower because of the 60 bell carillon. You can actually hear the bells in the distance. The whole thing was finished just a year before Bach died in 1930. This is one of the highest points in the whole Florida Peninsula, which is not a whole lot to say. The fact that it's actually called Iron Mountain is pretty funny, really. Just under 300 feet above sea level, isn't that adorable? The tallest skyscraper in Miami is more than twice as high. This is a very beautiful, idyllic place. Great for having a picnic, which is what a lot of people are doing, as you can see. We just sit at the shade under a Spanish moss waiting for the next concert to begin. There is uh, this uh, closed circuit TV monitor nearby, which is showing the Carillonist play. Let's walk around a little more along this marvelous, peaceful place. Edward Buck was buried right here at the bottom of the tower, right in front of the ornate brass door that you see. Oh. 
We take one final look at the tower in front of its reflecting pool and say goodbye to the Bach Tower Gardens. I hope you have enjoyed our little road trip to Orlando. It was such a great time, but it is always a great time when we hitch up Minitini and take it for a ride. By the way, thank you always for your support. I really appreciate your watching and all your comments. That's all folks, uh, do remember to subscribe and if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends and comment below. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, uh, so follow me there too if you will and visit the blog at roadnomad.com, join the mailing list. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. I'm riding, riding with my RV. Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding with my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV